Actually, Martin, it's a very good time to have a hit record, you know, when you're 15, because you don't have time to, like, get big-headed or anything. You know, it, it keeps you very fresh. It's kind of a young person's game, isn't it, being mm. a rock star? It kind of gets a little bit embarrassing, these older guys, like... Uh, being the rock star. In 1964, everybody would have seen you on television, they would have bought yeah. your record, you would have been the one that everybody was talking about. But you don't think about that when you, you know, that, that you, you know, now I'm looking at it, I'm just going, I should have been living in fear all the time because, you know, you would do Top of the Pops and the next morning everybody on the street would go, there's Herman. So tell us about the band. How did uh, Herman's Hermits come about in the first place? You know, we were all in different bands really uh, different groups as they were called in those days uh, all around manchester and i went to a college a school of music and there were kids there that were in none of them who became professional musicians which is very strange the cyclones became the heartbeats became members joined the whalers and the double bubble and we've over three years we turned imagine it was three years i started when i was 12. <laughs> you know it's I, at the time it was really depressing to look young you know i thought i could i could get motion pictures and be like uh, Clint Eastwood but I look too young. I suppose by 1970 or thereabouts uh, it was perhaps a bit boring I know it sounds terrible to say but you know um, it was almost predictable for you you were only um, still around 21. Yeah I mean it was amazing I was doing oldies but goodies tours when I it was called the tonight Herman's Hermit's oldies but goodies <laughs> night you know oh, my god I'm 21 and I'm already an oldies but goodie you know I never thought Herman's Hermit's had a life that was like Morecambe and Wise. Mm. But, you know, in the end, nobody came along to replace Herman's Hermit's music, which is pathetic. If you can tell me that between the 1960 and 1999... Half the records in the uh, on radio are the ones from the 60s. It's Something went wrong somewhere, didn't it? You decided, correct me if I'm wrong, to uh, to go it alone, really, and that was the new challenge for you, I suppose, wasn't it? I really like working, and the only way I could get 11 jobs... What happened was, when I was in Herman's Hermits, if somebody offered me a TV se- a, a play on Broadway for 13 weeks where I would be an actor and not a singer, which I wanted to do, then it meant that the Hermits were unemployed and unemployable. Mm. They couldn't go out and tour on their own. So we had a plan that I would go out and do these things and they would be the hermits and go out on their own and it just worked out too well. <laughs> you know, we end, we said, this is much more fun. I can be Peter Noon now and I'll start working on my career as Peter Noon so that people don't call me Herman when I'm 70. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, like, I've grown to like being called Herman. People call me Herman. <laughs> my mother calls me Herman because, you know, when, she, when I was like 15 or 16, when she would say, my son Peter, nobody was impressed. But when she said, my son Herman, she, you mean... Herman from Herman Summits? Yeah, he's my son. Now, now I like Herman. I enjoy Herman. You know, he brought so much pleasure. It's like a this third person in my world, you know, Herman and me. And I enjoyed be- going on stage and doing him. You know, I didn't leave and go into the wilderness. I, I needed to be working before. I, I needed the power. You know, I don't didn't have that much confidence in those days. So I wasn't going to leave the band until I had a job. You and were confident, I, though, that you could that you could act, of course, weren't you? Yeah, but that wasn't a real job. Acting has never been the real job for me. I mean, I, that's what I do when somebody comes up with an idea. But really what I do is I'm I'm an on-stage kind of person. You know, it, like in the theatre is okay if if they give me an audience. Mm. You know, I, I probably wouldn't be good on in in a movie, although I, I don't know. I, do, I did okay in the Herman's Hermits once because I do need an audience. You know, I'm that's my speciality. After the solo uh, hit, Oh, You Pretty Thing, and, um, you know, that, that sort of started to take off for you, you really did turn to acting in a big way, though. What was the first thing you did? You know, I can't remember now. It's a long <laughs> time ago. I think the first thing I did was I was on the Mike Yarwood show for three years. That was the, at the BBC. Yeah. I worked with Mike Yarwood for three years. Then I went to the south of France and I did all these French recordings and I had a bit of a career. I was the translator for American artists on... French television, mm-hmm. which was a very bizarre job, uh, talking to the Osmonds from the White House on in French, and uh, you know this English guy from Manchester, and um, the next thing then I was on Laverne and Shirley a bit. I guess the main thing was I did. Yeah, I've always been busy, you know. I, I I'm the luckiest guy, and I can jump out of the window of a building and land on a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Broadway, of course. That was good. A number of times, uh, a lot of actors would give their right arm to do Broadway. Well, it was good because apart from Tommy Steele, there was never really a rock... And I don't think of Tommy as a rock and roll musician. You know, he's like a... He's about as good as it gets, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And uh, 
apart from him, I was the first ever like rock star, you know, guy from a rock and roll band to ever star on Broadway. You know, Bowie ultimately did it, and so did Sting, but I was the first. Mm. So, like in the history books, you know, I got that that thing in New York where they're the first British um, mu- musical act to ever star on Broadway. And how and it, how did they know you? Did they know you um, from Herman's Hermits anyway? No, you know, when I went to the audition, and I the guy who directed that show had never heard of Herman's Hermits. He didn't even know any of the songs, which was the most bizarre thing. <laughs> But, you know, they auditioned. They wanted an English, somebody who could do an English accent with a musical background. So I said, well, that seems to have my name written on it. And the only thing that I had going against me was it was to play a 21-year-old Frederick, and I was 32. And I didn't think I was... But I looked younger than the 21-year-olds that were there, you know. Mm. So I got the job, and I sang it better than any of them.